Now it's been almost one year since I decided to trade in my first bike, which was a 2022 Iron 883, and I decided to trade it in for this 2023 Lowrider ST. After a year of owning this and over 5,000 miles, do I regret that decision? Let's jump on the bike and talk about it. So it's been about a year since I decided to trade in my first bike, which I said was the 22 Harley Davidson Sportster Iron 883, and almost a year since I did it and picked up this 2023 Lowrider ST. Do I have any regrets making that decision? Absolutely not. I do, I think anybody that sells their first bike or trades it in, you do regret that because you know it is your first bike and there's that little bit of sentimental value to it. But it, that having two bikes was not in the cards for me. So I don't in any way regret trading it in for this Lowrider ST, but I do have that little bit of piece of me that does regret it because you know that was my first bike. But outside of that, I have not looked back. This bike is better in every way possible from that little Sportster. So I've got about 5,500 miles on this thing and I've been meaning to do a 5,000 mile review, but the weather hasn't really cooperated. I actually had the 5,000 mile service done right before Thanksgiving. And because of winter here in the Midwest, I wasn't able to do a whole lot of riding since then. So it did kind of just sit after its 5,000 mile service. I did have it plugged into Harley Davidson's battery charger and with that being plugged in while the bike wasn't you know being ran or anything that I had no problems starting that thing up right away when I was ready to take it out. So if you are somewhere where you can't ride your bike year round like me I definitely highly recommend getting one of those battery chargers so that way you're not stuck with a dead battery when you want to take the bike out. So since my initial impressions video I did last year on this bike, honestly, nothing has changed. I absolutely love this thing. It's just awesome in any way. And the thing that I love about this bike in particular is the fact that bone stock from the dealer, you don't have to do anything to it. And this bike is just awesome. You'll love it. Obviously that being said, the stock exhaust you know sounds like a sewing machine it's garbage but other than that everything bone stock on this bike feels great runs great so if you end up buying this bike and don't have the money or anything to put upgrades into it yet you'll love riding this thing bone stock and of course when you do do those upgrades to make it your own you'll love it even better now coming from the 883 to this 117 cubic inch bike was a huge power difference for me and it's just been awesome the torque on this thing is insane and honestly i have no plans for doing any engine upgrade anytime soon just because everything about this engine is is great i right now don't feel like i need any more power and i've had zero issues with this bike at all i did have issues with my brand new sportster with uh, having a cracked piston and uh main seal leak for whatever reason that happened and luckily the dealership fixed that under warranty but still something you don't want to go through when you buy a new motorcycle from harley but luckily knock on wood i've had zero issues with this bike you know having put 5500 miles on it so far the only thing that there was and this was kind of with any lowrider st is there was a recall on a bolt underneath the seat that holds on um, a part that would kind of shear off and then could cause damage to the bike. But 
Harley sent out a warranty letter, so if you have a bike with that issue, you probably got the letter and should have gotten it fixed for free by the dealer. Man, I'm telling you, this bike just wants to get up and go. The power and sound of this bike, if you do even get some slip-ons, I mean, it just sounds amazing when you crank that throttle. So performance-wise, this bike has been flawless and it is just a joy to ride. You know, there's times where you just want to kind of lay back and hit that cruise control and just ride. But then there's times where you want to kind of put it in that sport mode, even though it doesn't have sport modes, but you want to really crank up that throttle and just rip around town. This bike will do that too and have no problems. Luckily with the higher suspension, it does sit up off the ground a little bit higher. And so that gives you more lean angle on this bike. And even compared to the touring models, I mean, this thing is nimble. It is super easy to throw around. And it just wants to go. For reference, I am 5'10", and I have really no comfort issues with this bike. It does have mid controls, so you get more of a sporty uh, seating position on this than with forward controls where you're more stretched out like on the touring bikes. I would say if you're probably any taller or six foot or above, you may feel cramped up on this bike with those controls because right now, my knee is a bent about 90 degrees. So not a whole lot of issue for me, but I feel like if I was, you know, six feet or taller, you'd probably want to get those forward controls. So I've had no complaints on the comfort of this bike. I think if I were to do anything, I would probably like to raise and pull back the handlebars a little bit, just so I'm not so hunched forward. Like it's not bad or anything, it's comfortable, but there's times where I just feel like I want to be a little more back so my back is straight and i'm not leaning forward not a big deal but on longer rides you do start to feel that and that is one thing i do see a lot of people upgrading on this is putting taller bars or a pullback on it and from what i've heard you can get up to the six and a half rise and two inch pullback before you have to put on cable extensions now it is going to be really tight but everybody have said you can do that with the stock gear Anything higher than that, you will have to change out to longer cables. Now the stock seat on this thing isn't bad at all. It is a Harley seat, so it's just foam insert in there. Not the most comfortable, but also it wasn't that bad. Like I rode it for almost a year and really didn't feel fatigued on it. After you know several hours of riding, you would start to feel uh, through that foam and be a little uncomfortable. But other than that, I mean, Stock seat's not bad, so if you don't want to drop a lot of money on an upgraded seat for a while, you'll be fine with that stock seat. I hate that when somebody does that motorcycle wave at you, but you're in the middle of shifting gears. And it's like, well, I don't want to be rude and not wave back at you, but my hands are kind of busy at the moment. So <laughs> it always happens. And I think one of the most underrated features of this bike is cruise control. I love having cruise control on this thing. I use it all the time on the highway and even these back roads, like to try and keep myself from speeding too much, I have to put that cruise control on. Otherwise, with the engine of this bike and the power, I find myself going over the speed limit. But if you just wanna, all you have to do is uh, press that button in and then push down when you are wanting to set it and you're good to go, it'll turn green when the cruise control is set and then to cancel it you just either press in like that or when you set it again you can hit the brake or you can push the throttle forward and it'll cancel that cruise control so really easy to control the cruise control on here so right now it's off all i got to do is press in and it turns on and to set it just press down and you're good to go so that, I never thought I would need cruise control on a motorcycle. I thought, ah, you know, I'm not touring, I don't need it. Until you have it, and then you're like, man, that is amazing to have cruise control on a bike. Now all the controls are pretty standard with any Harley Davidson motorcycle. You have your indicators on each side, you have your on and off button here, your hazards, and then you have your 
this little button at the very top goes through your menu so you can check your RPMs, your mileage, stuff like that. And then you have your brights and your horn, which I never use the horn because it's a puny little horn for a Harley Davidson. Now with the screen, it is a small digital screen. I didn't know if I would like that or not. I did like the analog gauge on my Sportster, but after using the screen and getting used to it, I have no complaints over it. I have no problem seeing it in the daylight. You know, it is almost 12 o'clock with the sun almost right over us and then I can still see everything I need to see. It gives you your gas gauge, how fast you're going, what gear you're in, and then I have it set to where I can see my RPMs. Having a gas gauge is amazing because if you've ever owned a Sportster, there's no gas gauge. So you have no idea when you're about to run out of gas until the gas light comes on. So having a gas gauge uh, is definitely something I enjoy having. And then right below that you have kind of all your indicator lights where your blinkers will show up and any hazard lights that you have come on and your cruise control all show up down here in this cluster. I would have liked to have seen a different screen, maybe a bigger one or some analog gauges, but honestly it shows you what you need, nothing you don't. So I really haven't had any thing to complain about with the display here on the bike. I love having the front fairing on this bike. It does a good job of blocking a decent amount of the wind. Obviously you have the vents that do allow some wind to come in on your chest. And it's basically a fairing and that's it. There's no infotainment center. They do make some speakers that are Bluetooth only that you can install, but I don't, for the cost of those and the kind of pain it looks like to install, I just listen to music through my cardio system. So this is a bare bones fairing. You don't get anything. I do wish they had like some sort of storage containers because that would be nice like they have on a road glide. Maybe something not quite as big, but just somewhere to put a little bit of storage, but not a big deal. I did get a bag up here that handles where I'm able to put some stuff in if I need to. And then obviously you have the bags, which we'll talk about, but the fairing is great. I never thought I'd want a fairing on a bike. But then after having one, I don't think I ever want to go back to not having one, but that's personal preference. One thing that I did have to do right away was change out the stock windshield just because I was getting a whole lot of head buffeting on the stock one. It was pretty short and I know they have to kind of accommodate a lot of different riders. So you're not going to get the perfect windshield on this bike, depending on your height. If you are shorter, the stock one might be just fine for you, but at 510, I was sitting enough over it to where I was getting so much head buffeting that it just had to go. And that was a whole different uh, thing I went through trying to find the right height windshield. So we'll talk about that when I finally found one and it's been great. I get no head buffeting on the back roads going, you know, 50 to 60. I get really no head buffeting on the highway either and it does block a lot of the bugs not all of them but it does keep a lot of wind off you like right now i can feel the wind on my arms and a little bit on my shoulders not a whole lot on my chest so that does help you're not getting beat up by the wind especially when you're on a highway and i just love the look of the fairing i think harley did a good job with the design of it it makes the bike just look awesome, it gives it clean lines. And having a bigger tank to hold more gas than what my Sportster did is nice because I don't have to fill up quite as much. Although depending on how you ride, if you do like to get on the throttle, obviously you're gonna find yourself getting more gas <laughs> quicker than if you're just cruising along, not ripping around town. But honestly, I just love taking this bike out on these backcountry roads and just cruising around, hitting that cruise control and then just enjoying the scenery, dealing with your own thoughts in your head and it's just, it's just fun. Like if I have a bad day at work or something, I just get on the bike and just go out and cruise and as someone that recently got into motorcycles, I never understood it when people you know, talked about just riding on the open road and being able to get out there and clear your head. Never understood it. 
and I don't think you will unless you actually get the opportunity to do so. It's just relaxing and a way to leave all that stress behind and then just enjoy the open road. It's nice wind therapy. Now I am hitting some decent sized bumps on this back road right now and on my Sportster, it sucked. Like it hurts every bone in my body hitting these bumps. The suspension on this is bone stock. I haven't done anything to it and it handles the bumps pretty good. Obviously you still feel them, but they're manageable. I don't feel like I'm gonna get thrown off my bike like I was on the Sportster. So the suspension on this, there's a single spring underneath the seat for the back suspension and then you have inboarded forks on the front and it feels great. I don't feel the need to upgrade the suspension anytime soon. No problem whatsoever getting up the speed on this thing. And this thing does have bags, which is nice because you know if you want to take a day trip and you want to bring stuff with you you have somewhere to put it if you want to run errands on this thing which i do you have somewhere to put it are they the best bags no they are clamshell but they're fine they work they are detachable so it's really easy to take them off if you don't want to run bags the one thing that a lot of people complain about is the one on the right is shorter than the one on the left but that's due to the exhaust since it does have dual exhaust on the right side, that they had to make that bag a little bit shorter. A lot of people complain about the way it looks. Honestly, when I'm on the bike, I'm not looking at that, so it doesn't bother me. So I have no plans to change out these bags at all, but that is one complaint that a lot of people have had is the different sizes, but to me, not a huge deal. I'm able to put quite a bit of stuff in the bags like I have all my recording gear in them right now and still have plenty of room left. And then you can always throw on another bag or anything, you can get a luggage rack. So you do have storage options on this bike, which is great. And it's easy to accommodate anything that you need to carry. Now I've said everything good about this bike, but there's gotta be some things I don't like about it or complaints I have, right? You know, honestly, they're so small, it doesn't, they're minute and personal. Really, I was trying to come up with a lot of things I don't like about this bike, and I really couldn't come up with much. A couple things I have is I would like to have, you know, higher or pulled back bars, but again, you can't accommodate everybody, but that's easy to change. One thing I don't like is the mirrors, and I, and I think this is kind of just a Harley thing, is the way these mirrors are set up, I have a hard time seeing, you know, what's behind me or anything. I basically look over and I see my shoulder. So I can't see who's directly behind me. They do make extensions for these things to make them jet out a little bit more, but they are always out of stock. So I have yet to be able to find those. So one complaint I don't like is the mirror setup, but I also had that complaint on my Sportster. The other one I have, not a big deal, but I wish this bike came set up for a passenger. The Street Bob, which, which is a lot less expensive, come set up for a passenger but this bike which is kind of made for a passenger doesn't come set up for one and is kind of annoying so you have to add passenger pegs you have to put a two-up seat on here which for the price that you're paying on these should be something that comes stock now I know the passenger set up on the street bob is nothing to write home about it has the passenger pegs and just a pad but at least it's something like even if it even if this thing just came with the passenger pegs that would be much better i'm going to try to find somewhere with shade so we could go over what i've done to this bike and talk a little bit more about it it's kind of hard to find it when you're you know around noon but let's see if we can find somewhere with shade all right so there's nowhere that had shade out here where we could talk about it so we're going to go back and go to the park where i normally film where there's some trees and try and get some shade but while we do that, we're gonna jump on the highway to get there. So let's talk about how this thing is on the highway.
definitely has no problem getting up to highway speed. And honestly, I feel really comfortable on this thing. And it's nice just being able to hit that cruise control and then just cruise down the highway. It does have six gears, which is amazing. I love having that six gear. Having only five on the Sportster made highway riding not very fun or comfortable. So the fact that this thing does have a six gear makes it a lot more comfortable to ride on the highway. So right now I'm going about 82 and you know, I got the wind on my arms and shoulders, but nothing on my chest. I mean, you got a little bit, but really not a whole lot of wind on my chest that I can feel. So I do feel some wind at the top of my helmet, kind of where the very top of the visor is or the vent up there. But right now I'm not getting a whole lot of head buffeting. On a windy day, it's a little bit different, but on a nice 80 some degree day where there's not a lot of winds, it is super comfortable riding this thing on the highway. All right, so I found a little bit of shade. So let's go ahead and go over some of the upgrades that I've done to this bike so far. And you'll see, this is the 2023 Lowrider ST. First thing I did was have the dealership install this Harley Davidson mustache engine guard just for safety because you never know, this is an expensive bike. So I wanna keep the important parts uh, protected just in case. So this is what the engine guard does look on the bike in case I know a lot of people were wanting to know what the uh, engine guard looked like on this. So this is what it looks like. And then going to the LED lights, I took these off my Sportster. These are the RRI LED lights with the smoked lens covers. So these things are a nice upgrade over the incandescent ones that come with the bike and on my Sportster. So super easy to swap those out. And you'll see that the headlight on the Lowrider ST is finally an LED. Now, is this the best LED headlight out there? No, but it works and it's definitely an upgrade from the incandescent ones that they had. The one on my Sportster, I mean, at night, I could barely even tell if that was on. So even though this isn't the best, it still works. So let's talk about these windshields here that I went through several. I tried the 10 inch one from Harley Davidson. What I didn't like about that is it is clear. So if you get sun glaring at you, it's, I don't know, not the best. So I like having a little bit of tint to the ones, especially since the stock one came tinted. So I went with a few different clear view windshields. This one is the large. I've also tried the medium and extra large. And when I was on the stock seat, this is the one that was fine for me. It was like the most protection and I could still see over it. So again, I'm 510 for reference. And with the stock seat that I had on here, the clear view large one worked best for me you'll see i do have the i believe this is a light smoke color it is tinted but not the darkest one that they make i also have a clockworks 10 inch that has a darker tint and it's roughly the same size and height but it doesn't come out quite as wide so you don't get as much wind protection from that one that one will probably be a good summer one that i put on here for those hot days just so i get more wind on me but i like the clear view because you do have a wider surface area so it does block a little bit more wind than some of the other ones out there personal preference though completely up to you it is super easy to just swap these out you just take out these screws here i do have several videos that i'll post a link to if you want to check that out so again stock handlebar setup i would like to get something that's a little bit pull back and a little bit higher but for right now these are fine i'm not too uncomfortable my back does hurt after like a long period of riding but nothing too crazy i'll just put on that cruise control and lean back a little bit for storage up here because as you can see there is no storage components or anything i do have a kimimoto bag here that i just velcro on the front it's basically the same thing as the thrash and supply but a lot cheaper and basically does the same thing it's not waterproof but it does help keep stuff from getting wet and you'll can see see that it does have a nice bright orange interior so you can see all your things so plenty of pockets in the main one and then they have a front pocket here as well where i can just put my glasses if i need those so definitely uh recommend the Kemimoto brand that you just get on amazon because it's like i said the same thing as the thrash and supply just a lot cheaper and then i do have another amazon branded phone mount that i use now i know with phone mounts you got to be careful because they could still vibrate and damage your camera 
I've been rocking this since I've had my Sportster. So a couple years I've been using this one and so far, knock on wood, no issues. So this one off of Amazon is a lot cheaper than those quad locks and has seemed to work so far for me. I guess going back to the handlebars, I did uh, put on some different grips. The grips on the stock one were okay, but they're just stock grips. These are the Harley Davidson branded ones. And I like these a lot more just because they have more of a grip um, on them. So a lot more stippling. And then they are thicker here in the center. And for me, it just gives you less fatigue on your hands. Uh, having that, it just fits my hand a lot better than the stock ones. So I do like having these Harley Davidson branded uh, grips on here that were aftermarket. Uh, definitely not needed, but for me, it makes it a little bit more comfortable um, on those longer rides. So moving on back, you can see I did change out the seat. This is the Saddleman Explorer seat. I went with this because my wife wants to ride and the step up just doesn't have enough surface area for the passenger. So the Explorer seat has a bigger surface area that is gonna be a lot more comfortable for the passenger. And so far, she's only been on one ride, but it was about 45 minutes to an hour and she had no complaints. This seat has been super comfortable. I've only got a few hundred miles or so on this thing so far, but I have no complaints. The stock seat, like I said, wasn't terrible, but I was starting to feel after you know longer rides, you could feel through that foam and it was okay. But having a, an upgraded seat like the Saddleman one is definitely gonna make those longer rides a lot better. It is you know, pretty stiff because it is brand new. It takes a while, but they have a gel insert. So it makes it a lot more comfortable. And for me now, this Explorer seat did raise my riding position quite a bit, it feels like. And so I think the large might be slightly too small now on the windshield. I may have to go back and try that extra large just because I've been noticing uh, getting a lot more bugs on myself. Not a huge deal, I know you're riding a motorcycle so you expect to get bugs on you. But when I had the stock seat and had the perfect height, I wasn't getting anything on me. No bugs were hitting my visor or helmet. But now that I'm raised up with this Saddleman seat, I am noticing I'm getting a lot more stuff on me. So I may actually try and swap out for the extra large. Unfortunately, I sold the one that I had so I'll have to rebuy it. But um, luckily with Clearview, you can actually try out their windshields as long as you leave the film on, you can send them back. But once you take that film off, then you're kind of stuck with it. So that is one thing I do like about Clearview is you can test them out before you commit uh, just because everything with motorcycles is expensive. So if you are rocking a passenger, I highly recommend trying out the Saddleman Step Up Seat. I thought my wife was gonna have some sort of complaint on it, but she had zero complaints, said it was really comfortable. And I do have the Harley branded sissy bar with the pad here that I had um, them install. It is the quick, quick detach, so it's easily detachable if you wanna do that. But if you don't have a passenger, you can definitely mount a bag here. I have another Kemimoto bag that I used on my Sportster. Just gives you more storage room, so you got options for that. And they do make luggage racks that can go on the back for more storage. So keeping with the back of the bike, I do have a lay down license plate. This thing was really easy to install and I was worried because I went with an Amazon branded one. And I know there's name brand ones out there, but they're quite a bit more expensive. And for just something that holds a license plate, I didn't want to spend a lot of money. So I took the risk and tried one from Amazon and it worked fine. I had no fitment issues, all, all the holes and everything lined up. So I'll have a link to everything that I can that I got on Amazon at anyway. And let me tell you, if you want to save some money, this Amazon branded one worked just fine and just makes the back of the bike look a lot better. I hated the, the stock one because it just sticks right up and just doesn't look good with the aesthetics. So this lay down one definitely looks a lot better. Now I still have the stock turn signals back here. I do plan on getting the RRI ones that they make for the rears. But right now you can see they do have the incandescent light bulbs there. LED lights for the tail light, which is nice. I'm not the biggest fan of this light, but it's gonna work for now. I'm gonna just swap out for the LED lights here until I decide what I wanna do back here. Now the bags, moving on to those, as we discussed, this one is shorter than this one, but that's because you have the dual uh, exhaust pipes back here, so they didn't have the room for a lower bag. So they decided, like this, I think it was a Sport Glide had the same thing. So a lot of people complain about that, especially if you go to a two into one exhaust, which a lot of people do, then it's a lot more noticeable. But for me, 
I'm gonna keep this exhaust set up like this for now and it's not a huge issue. They are clamshell bags, so all you do is lift this up and it opens up. And you can see I have quite a bit of stuff in here, so all my recording gear and stuff, and an air pump, which is nice to have. So plenty of room for me, and then you just pop those up, latch it, and then same thing on this other side. Again, not as much room, but still enough room to keep some stuff. And this is how you just quickly detach these from the bike. So that's one thing to note is just that bag difference, but you know, to each his own, his personal preference on if you want to keep those bags on there or not. But I feel like since you're paying the extra money for the bags on this bike, I'm just going to keep them on there for now. And then moving on over here, you'll, I did have the Harley Davidson passenger pegs installed just because I wish this bike came with passenger pegs already since it is a bike made for two up but it didn't, so I went ahead and just got the Harley Davidson branded ones on here, and it's nice because you can have those lifted up in case you don't have a passenger on there, and then when you do, you just bring them down like that. And you can see that they match the front pegs that came with the bike. Now for the exhaust, I kept the stock exhaust, but I did swap out the mufflers. I went with the Cobra, I believe they're the RPT or something like that. They are not the neighbor haters. Those things I thought were gonna be too loud. So these are the other ones that they offer. I think it's RTP. I'll post a link to the video I have uh, doing the sound comparison. And what I like about these is they're louder and they sound better than the stock, but they're not obnoxiously loud. One thing that I had on my Sportster was the Reinhardt slip-ons. And as great as those things sounded, I definitely had ear fatigue after riding for a little while. So I knew that I was gonna be riding this bike a lot more and further and also have a passenger on here. So I didn't want a super loud exhaust right by her ears. So I went with this setup and so far I've like it. I haven't had any complaints. It's loud enough, but not too loud. So we'll go ahead and turn these on real quick. So they are louder than the stock ones, but like I said, not obnoxiously loud. But if you want the sound comparison between the stock ones and these, go ahead and check out that separate video I have on that. And then you'll see I also added these mid-frame air deflectors right here. These are all also the Harley Davidson branded ones. I think Advent Black makes some uh, that are kind of match the paint a little bit better, but I wasn't aware of those at the time. But these, uh, they help a little bit, especially on hot days, kind of help keep the heat from the heads off of you. It's not gonna be a night and day difference, at least for me, but figured they're not very expensive. I give it a try. So it helps a little bit and it just kind of recirculates that air back down here instead of all that hot air going up on you. So those were super easy to install. I do have a video on that as well. And then the only other thing that I have done so far is added this Screamin' Eagle Bluetooth tuner. And the main reason I did that is because one, I wanted to keep the bike within warranty. And in order to do so, you have to use Screamin' Eagle performance parts. And when I put these slip-ons on, I was noticing some backfire and stuff like that. And I thought that if I gave it a little bit of a tune with that Screamin' Eagle, it would help that. Honestly, I didn't notice anything. They have, there's some different uh, tunes that you can put on with the Screamin' Eagle. Obviously it just is made for Screamin' Eagle parts. So you're not gonna find like different co manufacturers on there but you could go through and see which ones work. They also have one that you can do an auto tune. So you can just ride the bike and it'll kind of collect the data based on your riding and then tune the bike that way. I've done it once and really haven't gotten a chance to do it again. Honestly, for me, I didn't really notice much of a difference. Um, these still backfire a little bit, not a big deal, but I would not waste your money on buying the Screaming Eagle one. I would wait and either if you're fine with losing your warranty, possibly going with something different or just not doing it at all, unless you do the full exhaust, you don't necessarily have to do a tune or have a tuner on there for slip-ons. You can do it, um, which I did, but I definitely wish I would have waited and saved that 500 bucks because you can't return those or anything. Once you take it out and you pair it with this bike, it is attached to this bike forever and you're kind of stuck with it at that point. You can't change 
it to a different bike if you decide to sell this one and, and go with something else this tuner basically stays to this VIN number and you're stuck with it so I'm gonna play with that uh, some more this spring and summer and see if it makes a difference but so far for me I would recommend saving your money and not buying that possibly if you do the full exhaust maybe maybe that'll make a difference but just for slip-ons uh, I don't think it's something that's necessary. But if you do do it, it's super easy to install. You just take off the cover and then there's a blank port in there where you attach it to. And then there's some 3M tape that it comes with and then you just put it um, on that cover and it basically stays back there. And you just use the app and connect it to your phone and then you can control everything from that. One thing I did like is the fact that you can get real-time data. So it'll tell you um, a bunch of different things like your engine temperature and stuff like that within the app which is nice because you don't have that information on this digital gauge that you have with Harley. So you do get a little bit more information. So if you're looking for that, maybe try the Screaming Eagle tuner or some other one. But if you're just not worried about that or just have the slip-ons, again, save your money. But it does have some perks to it um, as well, having that more information, especially if you're on longer rides and gonna be in the middle of nowhere, you kind of want to see where your temperature's at. But I think Harley Davidson did a great job with the style of this bike. I love the black with this bronze color. You can see they have bronze on the wheels and just little accents with the bronze color. I really like that. The 2024 models, I thought I would like that red. I'm not a huge fan of it. It looks kind of like ketchup. And now that I've got that in my head, I can't get it out. But I definitely like the all blacked out look. And the gunship gray ones looked okay. But really with the styling of this bike, I think Harley did a good job. Are there some things that they could have done different? Yes. But again, you have to try and make a bike that fits everybody, which you really can't. But for a stock bike that you can tour on, but still rip around town on this thing they did really good on so i go through a little bit more details as far as the brakes and stuff like that on my initial video and then if you want to check out the specs you can always look up on their website for all those but having the dual disc brakes up front definitely give this thing some stopping power because you do have that 117 engine you need something to stop it so i like having dual disc brakes on this thing uh, i definitely feel a lot safer when i'm applying that pressure so yeah i love I'm definitely glad I made the decision to upgrade from the Sportster to this bike. I have no regrets other than that little bit of piece of me that wishes I would have been able to keep my first bike. But other than that, I don't look back at all. I love riding this thing, I love taking it out. It is so much more comfortable. The fact that you can tour with this if you want to, or just use it to ride around town, either one. You have that power there if you need it. You have storage capacity. This is a nice in-between bike from basically your would be your sportsers or normal soft tails and then your touring bike because this does have the capability to tour if you want to but then also has that performance and ability to go around town if you just want to do that i always feel awkward shooting in public just because there are uh this is a public park so there's always people walking by and driving by and when they see me <laughs> sitting here talking to a camera in front of a bike i don't know I know it's not, I know it's 2024 and people do this stuff all the time. Still for me, it's a little bit awkward, so. But go ahead and if you haven't subscribed to this channel and you like this video, hit that subscribe button so you can be notified when I come out with more videos on this and different upgrades that I do. You can also check my playlist for videos that I've already done on this bike for some of these upgrades I've done. And also the videos where I try out different windshields. I'll probably be doing another one when I go back to the XL if I'm able to do that, because I think with this Saddleman Explorer seat, I may need that. So if you guys like this, again, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comment section. Let me know if you guys have this bike, if you love it, what upgrades you guys have done and maybe looking into, maybe that'll give people some inspiration for their bikes as well.